Hello, my name is Anthony Rivera, and this is Chemistry Chapter 5 Problem Sets for Chem 10, Professor Wynn's class. Let's get started. There are two samples, 100 grams of iron and 100 grams of wood. Both are the same starting temperature and are placed in an oven. After a short period of time, they are taken out, and you notice that the wood is cooler to the touch than the iron is. What can you say about the real... Uh, relative specific key of the two samples. So to answer the first part of the question, I want you to think about this slide on a sunny day. When the sun comes out, it doesn't take long for the slide to get hot. That's because the aluminum doesn't have much of a heat capacity, so it gets hotter faster. In the same sense for the question that was asked earlier, the iron um, doesn't take that much time for it to get hot. So that being said, when, the, when you put it in the oven, the, the temperature will rise quite faster than the wood. That's not quite the same as it is for wood. Wood is actually has a higher heat capacity versus metal. Because of that change of heat capacity, it actually takes longer for the wood to change temperature like the way the metal did. That being said, you put them both in the oven together, obviously the metal would change temperature faster than the wood. And that's because one had a lower heat capacity and the other one had the higher heat capacity. A bottle containing 591 grams of water at 4 degrees Celsius is removed from the refrigerator. How many kilojoules are absorbed to warm the water to room temperature at 25 degrees Celsius? Alright, it's thinking break time. So in this thinking break, I want you to think... Which formula would you use to solve this problem? In just a moment, I will show you how. So hopefully this little thinking break can help you try to figure out the problem before I show you. You want to circle all the things that are relevant. So 590 degree grams, 4 degrees Celsius, 25 degrees Celsius. Then you kind of want to write them down. So that way you know what you're working with. So first, 591 grams of water. You need to get that times by what? You gotta know what it is. So if you don't know what it is, you might want to look at your notes. I will put it in a second, but right now we gotta find out the difference between the degrees. So 25 subtracted by 4 equals 21, right? So 591 grams times what? Times 21 degrees Celsius. Did you figure it out? Hopefully you answered M chat or M cat. So let's break it down. M equals mass, SH or C is specific heat, grams, degrees, Celsius. The T, which stands for uh, triangle T, change in temperature. However, we still have a problem even though we figured out what formula to use. What is the specific heat for water? The answer is 0 0.485. Still another issue. You see, the questions ask for kilojoules. So we need to round the specific heat to 4.85. Or in my problem, you'll see that I use 4.84. So we need a conversion factor in the middle for us to get our problem. So let's go ahead and erase that. All right. So if you don't know, I'll be writing it right now. So it's going to be 4.184 joules over grams, degrees, Celsius. Now what does that do? That crosses out uh, the grams on one side and the degrees Celsius on the other side. And so I forgot to write the degrees Celsius, so let me go ahead and write that. Okay, so now let's go ahead and cross them out. Change colors. There you go. Those are crossed out. And then what are you going to do? So now that you already have your conversion factors, I'm pretty sure you should be used to this by now. Um, you want to just multiply across. So when you multiply across, it's going to be 591, um, without the grams now, times 4.184 joules times 21. Right? And you will get 5,000, oh, actually 51,927.6 joules 
But are we done? Actually, no, we're not done. So, what's the next step? We gotta multiply it by one kilojoules, right? Because we actually have to find the kilojoules, not just the joules. So, there are 1,000 uh, joules and one kilojoule. So that will equal 51.92. But not done yet, right? Because we have what? Two sig figs. So we want to go ahead and round that up to 52 kilojoules. All right. On to the next one. Okay, so number three, you have a uh, 10 point. 0 grams of liquid H2O and 0 degrees Celsius, so go ahead and start circling what you need to do. How, many, how much energy is released slash absorbed for the sample to freeze? Was heat released or absorbed by the H2O in the process? So, oh, accident. So, like I said, circle what is relevant to your problem. That's always a good habit, so that way you know what is going on. Another thinking break. Just like before, either pause and solve, or give yourself time to think about what formula is needed to solve this problem. So, ooh, I think it's a little frozen. Okay, so you need to find Q. Q is your heat, right? What's, um, the next thing we're looking for is MHF. Heat of fusion. So that's pretty much mass times heat of fusion. Did you figure it out? Hopefully you did. And if not, that's okay too. If you didn't figure it out, I want you to think about the question that's being asked. The question is basically asking you to pour 10 grams of water into a cup or glass and put it in the freezer at 0 degrees Celsius or in layman terms, 30 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a freezing point. So now I think about it. The water is at room temperature, and you put it into an environment that's freezing. Is the heat being released, or is it being absorbed from the water? So, let's go ahead and enter that in. Uh, 10 grams, which is your mass. And what's the heat of fusion? It's going to be 334 joules over grams. And if you don't know that, that's also in your notes. So you take out the grams. 10 times 334 equals what? If you don't know, put it in your calculator, but right here we got 3,340 joules. Now what's next? So we want to turn that into what? Kilojoules, so there's 1,000. Kilo is 1,000, so uh, 1,000 joules and one kilojoules. I think I put grams on accident, but that's okay. You get the message. 3.34 uh, kilojoules. And that's going to be released. Hopefully my previous hint gave you an idea of what would happen. If you have water that's at room temperature that's put in a frozen environment, so that means that heat has to be released in order for it to freeze. So in this case, 3.34 kilojoules. If you go back to your notes, you can see that there's a picture of a hand holding an ice cube. And in that picture, what is happening? What's happening is, is that the ice cube that's being put on the hand is actually releasing heat to the ice cube. And vice versa, the ice cube is absorbing the heat from the hand. You're probably asking yourself, how does this even relate to this question number three? Well, in fact, when you put an ice cube out of a freezing environment and place it into your hand, heat is being released from the hand, and also heat is being absorbed on the ice cube. So you have an equal and opposite reaction when it comes to heat. So, number four. Draw a heating or cooling curve for each problem. Then, using the values for the heat of fusion, specific heat of water, and or heat of vaporation, calculate the amount of heat energy in the following. So basically, you gotta know which problems you're working with and which formulas you're gonna need. So, calories released when 75 grams of steam at 100 degrees Celsius condenses, then cools to a liquid of 15 degrees Celsius. So, 
what problem are you working with? You got to ask yourself that question. If you don't ask yourself that question, then you're not going to know the answer to what you're supposed to do. So, what do we do? Well, first you got to circle the stuff that you're working with. So, 75 grams, 100 degrees Celsius, and we have 15 degrees Celsius right there, right? So, that's a change in temperature. So, you already know how you're going to draw your heating curve. After drawing your heating curve, you know, it gives you an idea of what you're working with. So, heat's on the bottom, temperature's going to be on the side. We already know what we have, which was given. So, we're going from zero all the way up to 100 degrees, right? So, you go ahead and, you know, put your zero, you count all the way up to 100. So, what I did was I went, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, all the way up to 100. And then I labeled it as 100 on the very very top and so what you do with the heating curve is the way you draw it is you're gonna just pretty much start from where it said 100 degrees which was your starting point and then go all the way down to 15 degrees right because that's what the, the problem said to do so let's go ahead and do that so it was the same right here and then it goes all the way down to 15 degrees Celsius so what's next yes you have your heat one and your heat two if you saw that on your own then good heat is equal to Q so that's how you know what you're, if you're doing it correctly. So what will we do next is we have to write down the formula. Hopefully you're getting the hang of it by now. If not, that's okay. If you're still having issues, keep playing the video. But if you feel confident, pause it right here and see if you can solve it. Then play it and see if you got the answer right. Pretty much you have the same stuff, you just got to put it in a different format. So, in calories, what do you do? You gotta use the same formula, right? So that's gonna be the MHV, right? So Q1 will equal to 75 grams times 540 calories in what? One gram, right? Because we had to cross out that gram. When we get, um, when we do our calculations, 75 times 540 will equal to 40,500. Um, we're not done, of course, because we still need to find Q2. Q2 will be 75 grams times 1.00 calories in grams, degrees, calories. I'm sorry, Celsius. Times 85 degrees Celsius. And if you didn't know how to find 85 degrees Celsius, just rewind and go back to the first part, and I'll show you how to do that again. So, cross out the similars, multiply across, and we're going to get 6,375 calories. Are we done? If you said no, you're on the right path. So we have Q1 plus Q2 equals what? So get your answer for Q1, get your answer for Q2. Go ahead and add those together, and what will you get? If you did it correctly in your calculator, or if you're a good mathematician in your brain, you should get 46,880. But you always got to ask yourself, how many sig figs am I working with? So, if you already know the answer, 47,000 calories and are what? They are released. Go ahead and put calories released. So for B, calories needed to melt 3.79 kilograms ice sculpture at 0 degrees Celsius into a liquid state that eventually is 15 degrees Celsius. So ask yourself what's going on here. The question is asking us what is going to happen when this sculpture starts to melt. So we should already know that heat is being absorbed to do what? To make that sculpture melt into water. So circle everything that you need, like I just did. Um, my heat um, curve is going to start at 15 degrees Celsius at the highest point. 
zero degrees at the lowest. So what's going on again? Um, ice melts, right? But where does it start at? Zero degrees Celsius because it told us, right? So we're going to go up in temperature. So our first uh, heat was when it was at zero degrees. And then when it changed, it was uh, 15 degrees Celsius, right? So we're going to put Q1 uh, heat times heat of fusion again. And pretty much, if you don't know, it's going to be under heat of fusion right around state changes in your notes. So if you don't know, just go back to your notes, check it out. And first, what we got to do is 3.79 kilograms. We can't work with kilograms, unfortunately, with this, um, the formula that has been given to us. So what we're going to do is we're going to convert it to grams. I have two ways to do that. So let me show you the first way that I learned in Professor Wen's class. 3.79 kilogram times 1,000 grams over, yes, 1 kilogram, right? And that will cross out. And you just multiply by 1,000 and you'll get your grams per 3.79 kilograms. Now here's the other way I've learned. So you put four lines, put a period, put another set of lines. It should be six, but I didn't put it right here. Uh, K is kilo, gram, liter, meter, decimeter, centimeter, millimeter, and you add a couple more, and you will get your uh, micros. So that U stands for micros, right? So all you got to do is put your 3.79. So the first number is going to start at the K, because we're in kilograms. You put 379, right? So it's kilograms. Let's go ahead and put that 3, where the K is at, 3, 7, 9, right? So how do we complete it? Well, we got to go to grams, so put a 0 there, and our decimal was where? Right next to the 3. So we're going to carry that over, and there you go, 3,790 uh, kilograms. I'm sorry, grams. Right, so then I'm going to go ahead and write this answer down. Alright, let me erase everything. Hopefully that helps. If you're not good with converting or using the conversion factors, at least you can get an idea how to help yourself move faster, especially when it comes to tests. So, there's 80 degree calories in a gram, right? If you don't know that, refer to your notes again. They're in there, believe me. They are there. So, 30... I'm sorry, 303,200 calories, right? And that's the first part. Now we need Q2. Q2 is M cat. And hopefully you know what that stands for already. So what do we do? Put our 3,790 grams, what we converted earlier from kilograms, times one calorie grams in degrees Celsius. And we have our change in temperature, so a change in temperature is going to be 15 degrees Celsius, right? As before, you multiply across and eliminate what's the same. So grams and grams cancel out, so, uh, degrees Celsius, degrees Celsius cancel out. We get 56,850 calories. And yet, we are still not done, right? We're still not done. We use those two... Q1 and Q2 to add them together to get our final answer. And unfortunately, that's all the time I have. However, I'm sure you got the correct answer. So, sorry. <laughs> Not sorry. Hopefully you're doing good and hopefully this video has helped you a lot. Have a nice day.